Okay, we're now being joined by Arlene Blanco. Lewis, your line is now live. Hi, Arlene, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, good. Uh, I spoke to you before last week about training at Jackson Link with individuals who are really pushing and motivating you. Can you tell me how beneficial that's been to you and will you be doing your future camps in Albuquerque moving forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, the plan was to actually do my Chris Cyborg fight camp there. Um, unfortunately, COVID um, and the change of fight dates and this and that interrupted that. Um, but yeah, I was, I've just come off doing an eight-week fight camp there and um, yeah, definitely we'll be going back there. It was, um, you know, the best camp I've ever had leading up to a fight. Um, I'm feeling the best I ever have um, going into fight week. So yeah, once I put on a show on Friday night and showcase all my hard work and then can cement the idea that, yeah, I'll definitely be going back there for the future fight camps. I look forward to it. On the topic of, uh, topic of Chris Cyborg there, was there anything critical that you took away from that fight that you hope to implement on Friday night? Um, yeah, definitely. De the mentality going into that fight. Um, you know, I was I was there in the moment ready to bite down on my mouth guard and fight five rounds with us. So, um, unfortunately, a couple of little um, mistakes that I'd made in the fight um, that led to, obviously, me losing. But, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely positives that I've taken from the fight. It's been a long nine months since then that I've been, like, biting it at the teeth to get back in there. So, um, super excited for Friday night just to showcase all the hard work and improvements that I've made. Kevin? Hey, Arlene, thanks for joining us. Uh, listen, you know, um, you haven't been to your home Australia in a while. You know, you've been missing family a lot. Uh, how has that experience been? Um, yeah, I missed them before I even left. <laughs> um, I um, definitely am a homebody. So, yeah, the idea of even leaving to do fight camp was something that I, um, you know, struggled with a little bit. But thankfully, I had the most ex amazing experience, um, you know, training, and, um, you know, hanging out with the fighters and, and that at Albuquerque, um, training at Jackson Wink. So, yeah, it, um, and lucky for technology too. Like I was able to keep, keep in contact with my family, you know, FaceTime and this and that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm over here. I'm just going to make sure that this sacrifice being away from my family is, is worthwhile and really putting on a show Friday night. All right, listen, you know, you've been to the top. You faced the champion, right? You, you've been through it all. You know, on the rebuild back to, you know, fighting for the championship again, do you know what you have to do now? Knock people out. <laughs> Just um, put on a show. Like, yeah, like you said, I've been there before. I've had big fights. Um, I've been having big fights my whole career. Um, so, yeah, like with Julia, 2017 was my last loss before the fight with Chris. So, I three impressive wins, two stoppages, and then um, a unanimous decision win against Leslie, who is a tough opponent. So, yeah, I know what I've got to do. Um, just take it one fight at a time. So at the moment, I'm not even thinking about the Chris Cyborg fight. I'm thinking about Friday night, what I'm going to do there. And then um, I'll be straight on to my manager. We'll be pushing for another fight. So, um, yeah, Friday night's for the first stop. All right. Best of luck. Thank you. Max Milano. Hey, Arlene. I'm Max Morales from MMA Fit. Hi, so, how are you? <laughs> good. So you have important names on your record, Diana as well, some notable victories and defeats, Diana as well. And your last fight was against Chris Cyborg. So would you say you have a better experience against the featherweight top competition? And do you think that will give you an edge against her? Um, definitely. Well, yeah, I've, my second fight with Bellator was against Marlos Kunin, who was the number one in the world at that time under Chris Cyborg. Um, then you've got, like, my fights experience. I've, I've done eight rounds with Julia Budd. Um, and then I've obviously fought Chris Cyborg. So, yeah, I've definitely had tough experience, but you don't ever underestimate any opponent. Every fight's a dangerous fight. So, you know, um, and I know what it's like to be the underdog coming up. She's an unranked fighter. Um, I'm the number two in the division. So I remember what that was like. And you go in and you're hungry. So she's going to be a dangerous opponent, and I'm not taking her lightly, but she's also not taking my number two spot. And with COVID protocols getting maybe a little bit looser every day, do you feel that like this preparation was better for this fight? Yeah, definitely. Um, I trained, I spent eight weeks at Jackson Wink with um, the best coaches and training partners in the world. I can't ask for a better fight camp. One of the biggest um, differences for me, though, was the fact that I was able to go over there and concentrate purely on fight camp. So, you know, when I'm back home in Australia, I am juggling family life, work life, um, outside commitments, coaching, 
um, mentoring this and that. So yeah, my day is very, very busy. Um, you know, I, I do um, sort of, I'm very vocal about that on my social media about being extremely busy and, and I've juggled it um, previously, but it was one of the things that I noticed this fight camp that um, how different it was just to be a professional athlete and purely focus on your training and recovery and um, yeah, resting between your sessions. Okay, just a few more, Santiago. Hi Arlene, greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. How are you doing and how are you experiencing this fight week thus far at the Mohegan Sun Arena? I'm cool, calm, collected and ready. Yeah, I'm feeling super relaxed. Um, I'm not too sure whether or not it's just because I'm not suffering from jet lag or anything, but like usually I'm flying over from Australia and um, I'm juggling, you know, jet lag and you know, the time difference and everything and, and a weight cut and that. So but here I've, you know, I've flown over from Albuquerque. I'm adjusted to the time. Um, I've got a spring in my step and I'm just, yeah, super excited. It's been nine months since I stepped inside the Bellator cage and here I am ready to put on a show. Yeah, you look fantastic. Diana's last fight was against the former champion, Julia Butt, and it ended in a split decision win for Julia. But a lot of people thought Diana won the fight. Did Diana surprise you with an excellent Bellator debut like that? And do you also think that she won the fight? Upon like when I first watched it, I thought it was super super close, and yeah, I was I was thinking it could have gone either way. Um, but then you know once I rewatched it, um, I could see that Julia definitely cleared this like um, scored the clearer punches and strikes. But yeah, no super impressive performance for someone that's coming in like new to the division and um, yeah put, tried to put on a show. So credit to her. This will be your 11th fight for Bellator and you have been with the promotion since 2015. You've seen a lot of girls come in and also go out. This featherweight, this featherweight division right now is so stacked and without a doubt the best 145 division in all of MMA. Can you describe how different it is now compared to 2015 when there wasn't even a featherweight title around? And can you talk a little bit about the work that Scott Coker did in order to make this 145 division grow from the bottom up to what it has become today? Yeah, definitely. Well, it was an honor to be, you know, amongst the first few featherweight females to be signed. Um, you know, I was the first Australian female signed to the Bellator promotion. So um, to watch it grow over the years, definitely, um, you know, Scott and the Bellator team have made the right moves. Um, you know, they just recently re um, signed a new 145er, um, Pam Sorensen, to the division two so they keep signing all these fighters um and it's awesome for me because i just think wow another opponent so like that's the first thing i think straight away when i um you know see another signing so it's um i'm glad that i made the choice to sign with bellator years ago and um and to watch it grow and be given all the opportunities that i've been given within them um and fighting girls from all over the world so it's exciting to be a part of it okay last one suki Hi, Arlene. Pleasure to speak with you. I just wanted you to shed some light on uh, choosing Jackson Wink as the camp, because one thing we've seen in 2021, I feel like they're flying a bit under the radar with Aaron Pico, Christian Edwards having such big fights, and even Clarissa Shields. So what was it about them that attracted you? Um, well, I'd been there. So that wasn't the first time that I'd been to Jackson. I'd, I was back there um, the beginning of 2016, shortly after Holly um, had knocked out Ronda. So um, I had actually met um, the wrestling coach from Jackson's at one of my Bellator fights and and you know I was also talking to Greg Jackson at the time as well but um, I was a big fan of Holly um, you know she was a boxer like myself who transitioned over to MMA and 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 she had been so successful in it and I thought well I want to work with these coaches that have helped her transition from being a striker to an MMA fighter and um, so I went back there back in 2016 and I really liked just the whole atmosphere and vibe of the team, the, um, you know, the coaches, um, you know, they welcomed me and they've always welcomed me. I was there early last year and, you know, this last eight weeks too, just the eight weeks that I spent there to do a full fight camp, how I was treated, um, you know, looked after and just made feel part of the team. Um, not to mention, obviously, the quality of coaching and the high level of um, training partners that I had for the eight weeks. Um, yeah, definitely 100% be, be going back there to finish um, all my fight camps and do them there at Jackson Wing. Amazing. I'm a big Holly fan myself, so I can understand that. Best of luck this week. Thank you very much. Okay, I mean, that was the last one. Thanks for the time. No worries. Thank you.